Okay. What I did to lower it down more than you saw in the last video is I stuck the one inch lowering springs, coil springs that I bought from Brothers Trucks back on. I took the stock height springs back off and went ahead and reinstalled the one inch drop springs. And as you can see, it dropped it a lot more than an inch. I've got very little gap now. I have actually maybe an inch worth of gap on this side. I've got less on the other side. If it was this side at least, if this side was like a half inch taller, I think I'd be happy with it. I'm not, you know, uh, upset with this. I mean, this side, you know, it would work still, but it's just a little on the low side, but I took it over some humps uh, tur wall turning, full, full, full cut turning. It doesn't rub on either side, but it's a little bit lower than I would personally like. If I lowered the rear just a little bit, because I do like the rake look, if I lower the rear an inch or an inch and a half, It'll probably make it look a lot better. So I have plenty of ground clearance. No chance of me rubbing anything because basically it's the height probably of your average car. My Corvette is lower. And I haven't lowered the Corvette. So got plenty of room beneath the control arms. But as you can see on this side, I can get my hand through at least. Where with the, um, the 15 inch wheels, I could barely get my fingers through. So there is that much more space, but I can barely get two fingers in and it's tight. Get my thumb in, no problem, with some room to spare. I don't know, guys. You tell me. Leave, leave some comments. What would you do? Would you leave it like this? Would you take the original height coil springs and just trim them a little bit at a time and install them, take them back off until you get it perfect to where, to where you want it? I mean, this is not bad. I mean, it really is not bad. My only concern really is if these springs decide to settle a little bit more. Because then, I don't think I would like it at all. I don't think that they'll settle more because I had these springs on this very van for about three months. Of course, I never drove it anywhere, but it was sitting with the full weight on the coil springs for at least three months. So I really don't expect it to settle at all, hopefully. I know that they make these twist on little block deals that you stick between the coils and you twist them and it'll raise it, but oh, those are so tacky. I'd rather just leave it like this than do something like that. Or like I said, I got, I have the um, stock height springs. I can cut a little bit out of them at a time until I get it perfect. The funny thing is when I, when I first dropped the truck after installing these springs, I was able to get two fingers above the um, tire, between the tire and the, and the fender well. And to me, that was perfect. I mean, it looked awesome. But there ain't no way I can do that now. And you see, I, mean, I can barely fit them in here, but when I first lowered it, I had just a slight, it was a loose fit, in other words. Like I said, I'll, I'm going to leave it like this for a while and see what happens. 
and I'm gonna contemplate lowering it a little bit in the rear. I do like the rake look. I mean, this is this is a, kind of a lot of rake. Maybe just a, you know, maybe a few centimeters more than I would, uh, you know, try try to do intentionally. Yeah, so right now I'm just going to call it done as far as suspension and move on to the interior installation of the uh, stereo with the backup camera. Worry about the uh, suspension later if I'm going to worry about it at all. Yeah, thing looks like a Hot Wheel. Maybe I'll buy some Hot Wheel uh, these metal Hot Wheel logos. There should be one of those on here somewhere. Maybe. What do you think, guys? Anyway, leave a comment. You got any suggestions? What I should do? If I should just leave it like this? I like this side a lot better. And it's barely, barely higher than the other side. It might be like 2 sixteenths or 2 eighths higher on this side than the other side. I haven't measured it yet. But it's amazing how just, you know, a couple eighths can make a difference. But anyway, guys, like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And um, hit the bell icon because in the next, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be in the next day or two, they're going to call me from the Chrome shop and I'm, they're going to have my new grill and my new smoothie bumper and the headlight bezels and the Chevy bow tie emblem ready for pickup. And then I'll get those babies installed and man, you're going to see a huge change, huge improvement. It's just gonna look night and day. It's gonna look like a show van just by putting that that stuff on, that chrome on. And I paid for the show chrome. Cost me 19, almost $2,000. And that's for the, uh, the show chrome on the bumper, show chrome on the grill, show chrome on the headlight bezels, and show chrome on the bow tie. This bumper, it didn't make the grade. I took it to a crappy chrome shop thinking that they were going to do a decent job because they did do decent work for me before in the past. But when I took, uh, you know, in the past, I'm talking like uh, 1995, 96, somewhere around there. I took them 55 Chevy Bel Air chrome bumpers to do for me for my 55 over there. And it came out really good. But man, this is this is really bad work. So this, this bumper will be good, you know, for somebody that wants to sand it down and paint it, but I don't plan on keeping it, but I did get rid of the carriage bolts, you know, welded the brackets on, smoothed it out, but yeah, if you painted it, you know, the color of the, uh, the van, you know, it would, it would look good. Smoothed it out a little bit better with a little bit of Bondo because it is a little bit wavy. But anyway, um, the old saying is, good work ain't cheap and cheap work ain't good. And that's a fact. But um, check out the guy's work too before... You know, you, you lay your chrome down and say, okay, yeah, go ahead and do it. You know, take a look at some of his stuff that he's already done. Because odds are that's what yours is going to look like.
Also, let me know, let me know what your opinion is on the uh, rake. Is it too much rake? Should I drop it in the back an inch and a half, like I said, or leave it alone? And you gotta remember that um, if I ever decide to haul stuff in this thing, it's gonna weigh it down in the rear. It'll weigh it down in the front too. So that's why I'm hesitant to wanna lower it in the rear. Because with gas prices the way they are right now, thanks to Brandon, uh, I'm not gonna wanna drive my truck, which runs on diesel, which is even more expensive. And now they're saying that there's going to be a diesel shortage and that diesel it's going to go up to like 10 bucks a gallon. Of course, when that happens, expect uh, grocery short store shelves to become bare like you would see in uh, Venezuela, socialist country. Everything runs by truck. Everything runs by truck. You can't get it from point A to point B without it at some point being on a truck. And... Anything that you do find in the grocery store, since it costs ten bucks a gallon, uh, you're gonna look. You're gonna see some substantial inflation costs on those placed on those items that you paid a lot less before last time you bought it. So, anyway, again, I really appreciate all you guys taking the time to watch my videos. I do have a deficit though on thumbs up. It's it's kind of funny in a way. I'll get like, you know, a thousand views and only three or four likes. <laughs> but um, anyway, again, have a good day. Have a good afternoon. Have a good evening. Have a good night.